This is the second talk from the book, Knowing and Seeing by the Venerable Pa'ak Sayadaw, How You Develop Absorption on Other Subjects. In the previous talk, we discussed how to develop the meditation subject of Anapanasati, mindfulness of breathing up to the fourth jhana, and how to develop the five masteries. As discussed, the light of concentration is then bright, brilliant, and radiant which means the yogi can, if he wishes, move on to develop Vipassana meditation. But at this point, the yogi can also go on to develop his Samatha meditation further. Today, we shall discuss how to develop other Samatha subjects, meditation on the 32 parts of the body, the skeleton, tin, kasinas, etc. How you develop the 32 parts of the body. If you want to develop meditation on the 32 parts of the body, you should first reestablish the fourth anapana jhana so the light of concentration is bright, brilliant, and radiant. You should then use the light to try to discern the 32 parts of the body one at a time. The 32 parts of the body are 20 parts with predominantly the earth element and 12 parts with predominantly the water element. The 20 earth element parts should be discerned in four sets of five. Number one, head hair, body hairs, nails, teeth, skin. Number two, flesh, sinews, bones, bone marrow, kidneys. Number three, heart, liver, membrane, spleen, lungs. Number four, intestines, mesonary, gorge, feces, brain. The 12 water element parts should be discerned in two sets of six. The first one, bile, phlegm, pus, blood, sweat, fat. The second group, tears, grease, saliva, snot, synovial, and urine. Discern the parts in the given order, but one at a time. Try to see each part as distinctly as you would see your face in a clean mirror. If, while doing this, the light of concentration should fade and the part of the body being discerned become unclear, you should reestablish the fourth anapana jhana. So the, bright is, the light is again bright and strong. Then return to discerning the parts of the body. Do this whenever the light of concentration fades. Practice so that you are, from head hairs down to urine, or from urine back to head hairs, able to see each one clearly and with penetrating knowledge. Keep practicing until you become skillful. Then, again using the light of concentration with your eyes still closed, you should try to discern another being close by. Is it, ex it is especially good to discern someone in front of you. Discern the 32 parts of the body in that person or being from head hairs down to urine and from urine back to head hairs. Discern the 32 parts forward and backwards many times. When you have succeeded, discern the 32 parts once internally, that is, in your own body, and once externally, that is, in the other person's body. Do this many times again and again. When you are able to discern internally and externally like this, the power of meditation will increase. You should thus gradually extend your field of discernment bit by bit from near to far. Do not think that you cannot discern beings far away. Using the brilliant light of the fourth jhana, you can easily see beings far away. Not with the naked eye, but with the eye of wisdom. You should be able to extend your field of discernment in all ten directions, above, below, east, west, north, south, northeast, southeast, northwest, southwest. Take whomever you discern, be they human, animal, or other beings, in those ten directions, and discern the thirty-two parts, once internally and once externally, one person or other being at a time. When you no longer see men, women, devas, or buffaloes, cows, and other animals as such, but only see groups of 32 parts, whenever and wherever you look, internally or externally, then can you be said to be successful, skillful, and expert in discerning the 32 parts of the body.
the three entrances to Nibbana. Here, let us look at what is called the three entrances to Nibbana. In the Maha Satipatthana Sutta, the Buddha, the Buddha teaches that the four foundations of mindfulness is the only way to Nibbana. The commentary explains further that there are three entrances to the way to Nibbana. They are the Samatha subjects of the color casinas, repulsiveness, and voidness of self, which is four elements meditation. Therefore, when a person has become proficient in discerning the 32 parts of the body, internally and externally, he can choose to develop any of those three entrances. The first entrance we shall discuss is repulsiveness meditation. How you develop skeleton meditation. To develop meditation on repulsiveness, you take as object either all 32 parts of the body or only one part. Let us look on how to meditate on, for example, the skeleton, the bones, which is one of the 32 parts of the body. You should first reestablish the fourth uh, anapana jhana. So the light is bright, brilliant, and radiant. Then use the light to discern the 32 parts in your own body and then in a being nearby. Discern thus internally and externally once or twice. Then take the internal skeleton as a whole and discern it with wisdom. When the whole skeleton is clear, take the repulsiveness of the skeleton as object. That is the concept and noted again and again as either repulsive, repulsive, or repulsive skeleton, repulsive skeleton, or skeleton, skeleton. Note it in any language you like. You should try to keep your mind calmly concentrated on the object of repulsiveness of the skeleton for one or two hours. Be careful to see the color, shape, position, and delimitation of the skeleton so that its repulsive nature can arise. Because of the strength and momentum of the fourth jhana concentration based on anapanasati, mindfulness of breathing, you will find this meditation will also become deep and fully established. You will be able to produce, sustain, and develop the perception and knowledge of repulsiveness. Once your concentration on the repulsiveness of the skeleton is established, you should drop the perception of skeleton and just be mindful of the repulsiveness. According to the Vasudhimaga, seeing the color, shape, position, and delimitation of a part is seeing the Ugaha Nimitta. Seeing and discerning the repulsiveness of that part is seeing the Patibhanga Nimitta. By concentrating on the Patibhanga Nimitta of the repulsiveness of the skeleton, you can attain the first jhana, at which time the five jhana factors will be present. They are, number one, application, vitaka, directing and placing the mind on the patibhanga nimitta of the repulsiveness of the skeleton. Number two, sustainment, vikara, maintaining the mind on the patibhanga nimitta of the repulsiveness of the skeleton. Number three, joy, piti, liking for the patibhanga nimitta of the repulsiveness of the skeleton. Four, bliss, sukha, happiness associated about the patibhanga nimitta of the repulsiveness of the skeleton. And five, one-pointedness, kagata, one-pointedness of mind on the patibhanga nimitta of the repulsiveness of the skeleton. You can, in a similar way, attain the first jhana on the repulsiveness of one of the other parts of the body. The question arises, how can joy and happiness arise with the repulsiveness of the skeleton as object? The answer is that although you are concentrating on the repulsiveness of the skeleton and experience it as really repulsive, there is joy because you have undertaken this meditation, because you have understood the benefits of it, and because you have understood that it will help you to eventually attain freedom from aging, sickness, and death. Joy and happiness can arise also because you have removed the defilements of the five hindrances which make the mind hot and tired. It is just like a scavenger would be delighted to see a big heap of garbage thinking, I will earn a lot of money from this. Or like a person who is severely ill would be happy and joyful when relieved by vomiting or having diarrhea. The Abhidhamma commentary explains that whoever has attained the first jhana on the repulsiveness of the skeleton should go on to develop the five masteries of the first jhana. After that, the yogi should be here too to take the nearest being, 
best of all, a person sitting in front of him, and with his light of concentration, take that person's skeleton as object. He should concentrate it on it on it as repulsive and develop this until the jhana factors become prominent. Even though they are prominent, it is, according to commentary, neither access concentration nor absorption concentration because the object is living. If, however, you concentrate on the external skeleton as if it were dead, you can, according to the sub-commentary to the Abhidhamma, the Mulatika, attain access concentration. When the jhana factors are clear, you should again concentrate on the internal skeleton as repulsive. Do this alternatively until internally, then once externally, again and again. When you have meditated like this on the repulsiveness of the skeleton and it has become deep and fully developed, you should extend your field of discernment in all ten directions, taking one direction at a time, whether your light of concentration, wherever your light of concentration reaches. Develop each direction in the same way. You should apply your penetrating knowledge both near and far in all directions. Once internally and one, once externally, practice until wherever you look in all ten directions, you only see skeletons. Once you have succeeded, you are ready to develop the white casina meditation. How you develop the ten casinas, the color casinas. There are four colors used for casina meditation, blue, yellow, red, and white. Blue can also be translated as black or brown. All four casinas can be developed up to the fourth jhana by using it as object the colors of different parts of the body. According to Abhidhamma commentary, the head hairs, body hairs, and irises of the eyes can be used for the blue, brown, or black casina up to the fourth jhana. Fat and urine can be used for the yellow casina. Blood and flesh can be used for the red casina. And the white parts, the bones, teeth, and nails can be used for the white casina. It says in the suttas that the white casina is the best of the four color casinas because it makes the mind clear and bright. For that reason, let us first discuss how to develop the white casina. You should first reestablish the fourth jhana, fourth anapana, jhana so the light of concentration is bright brilliant and radiant you should then use the light to discern the 32 parts of the body internally then externally in a being nearby then discern just the skeleton if you want to discern it as repulsive you can if not simply discern the external skeleton then take either the whitest place in that skeleton or if the whole skeleton is white the whole skeleton or the back of the skull and concentrate it on it as white, white. Alternatively, if you want to, and your concentration is really sharp, you can, if you have seen the internal skeleton as repulsive and reach the first jhana, take the skeleton as white and use that as your preliminary object. You can also discern first the repulsiveness in an external skeleton and make that perception stable and firm, thus making the white of the skeleton more evident. Then you can change to the perception, the perception of it to white, white, and instead develop the white casino. With one of the objects of white in the external skeleton as object, you should practice to keep the mind calmly concentrated for one or two hours. Because the strength and momentum of the fourth jhana concentration based on anapanasati, mindfulness of breathing, you will find your mind will stay calmly concentrated on the object of white. When you're able to concentrate on the white for one or two hours, you will find that the skeleton disappears and only a white circle remains. When the white circle is white as cotton wool, it is the ugaha nimitta taken up sign. When it is bright and clear like the morning star, it is the Patibanga Nimitta, the counterpart sign. Before the taken up sign arises, the skeleton Nimitta from which it arises is the Parikama Nimitta, the preparatory sign. Continue to note the Kasina as white, white until it becomes the Patibanga Nimitta the counterpart sign.
continue concentrating on the Pativanga Nimitta until you enter the first jhana. You will find, however, that this concentration is not very stable and does not last long. In order to make it stable and last a long time, you need to expand the Nimitta. To do this, you should concentrate on the white Pativanga Nimitta for one or two hours, then determine to expand the white circle by one, two, three, or four inches, depending on how much you think you're able to expand it. If you succeed but do not try to expand the Nimitta without first determining a limit, make sure to determine a limit of one or two, three, or four inches. While expanding the white circle, you may find that it becomes unstable. Then go back to noting it as white-white to make it stable. But as your concentration increases, the nimitta will become stable and tranquil. When the first expanded nimitta has become stable, you should repeat the process that is, again, determined to expand it by a few inches. This way, you can expand the nimitta in stages until it is one yard in size, then two yards, and so on. Do this until it extends in all ten directions around you, without limit, and so that wherever you look, you see only white. Do it until you see not even a trace of materiality, whether internal or external. If you develop the white casina in a past life during this or a previous Buddha's uh, dispensation, that is, if you have white casina parami, then you will not need to expand the Pativanga Nimitta because as you concentrate on it, it will automatically expand in all 10 directions. You should, in either case, now keep your mind calmly concentrated on the expanded white casino. And when it is stable, then just as if you were to hang a hat on a hook in a wall, put your mind on one place in that white casino Keep your mind there and continue to note white, white. When your mind is tranquil and stable, the white casino will also be tranquil and stable and will be exceedingly white, bright, and clear. This too is a Pativanga Nimitta produced by expanding the original white casino Pativanga Nimitta. You must continue to meditate until you can concentrate on that white casino Pativanga Nimitta continuously for one or two hours. Then the jhana factors will become very predominant, clear and strong in your mind, and you will have reached the first jhana. The five jhanic factors are, number one, application, vitaka, directing and placing the mind on the Pativanga Nimitta of the white casino. Number two, sustainment, vikara, maintaining the mind on the Pativanga Nimitta of the white casino. 3. Joy, pity, joy at the Pativanga Nimitta of the White Casino. 4. Bliss, sukha, blissful about the Pativanga Nimitta of the whole of the White Casino. And 5. One pointedness, ikagata, one pointedness of mind on the Pativanga Nimitta of the White Casino. The jhana factors are together called jhana. In the way described, In the talk on Anapanasati, Mindfulness of Breathing, develop the five masteries of the first white casino, and then develop the second, third, and fourth jhanas and the masteries of them too. How you develop the remaining color casinas. If you have developed the white casino meditation up to the fourth jhana using the white of an external skeleton, then you will also be able to develop the brown, blue, or black casino using external head hairs, the yellow casino using fat or urine, and the red casino using external blood, etc. You can also use those parts in your own body. When you have succeeded, you can develop the color casinas using the color of also flowers or other external objects. All blue and brown flowers are calling out, inviting you to develop the blue casino. And yellow flowers are calling out, inviting you to develop the yellow casino. All red flowers are calling out, inviting you to develop the red casino. All white flowers are calling out, inviting you to develop the white casino. Thus, a skilled yogi can use whatever he sees to develop casino concentration in Vipassana, be it animate or inanimate, internal or external. According to the Pali text, the Buddha taught ten casinas. They are mentioned four color casinas plus a further six. The earth, water, fire, wind, space, and light casinas. 
Now let us discuss how to develop the remaining six types of casinos. How you develop the earth casino. To develop the earth casino, you should find a piece of plain earth, which is reddish brown like the sky at dawn, and with no sticks, stones, or leaves. Then with the stick or some other instrument, draw a circle about one foot across. This is your meditation object, an earth casino. You should concentrate on it and note it as earth, earth. Concentrate on it for a while with your eyes open, and then close them and visualize the earth casino. If unable to visualize the nimitta in this way, you should reestablish fourth anapana, or white casino jhana. Then use the light of concentration to look at the earth casino. When you see the nimitta of earth as clearly as if you were looking at it with your eyes open, and it is thus an ugaha nimitta, you can go on and develop it somewhere else. You should not concentrate on the color of the earth nimitta or the characteristics of hardness, roughness, etc. of the earth element, but concentrate only on the concept of earth. Continue to develop this Ugaha Nimitta until it becomes pure and clear and is the Pativanga Nimitta. You should then expand the Pativanga Nimitta a little at a time and in all ten directions and develop this meditation up to the fourth jhana. How you develop the water casino. To develop the water casino, you should use a bowl, bucket, or well of pure, clear water. Concentrate on the concept of water as water, water, till you get to the Ugaha Nimitta and then develop it as you did with the Earth Casino. How you develop the Fire Casino. To develop Fire Casino, you should use a candle, a fire, or any other flames you remember seeing. If unable to visualize it, you can make a screen with a circular hole in it about one foot across. Put the screen in front of a wood or grass fire so you can only see only the flames through the hole. Ignoring the smoke and burning wood or grass, concentrate on the concept of fire as fire fire until you get the Ugaha Nimitta and then develop it in the usual way. How you develop the wind casino. The wind casino is developed through the sense of touch or sight. You should concentrate on the wind coming in through a window or door, touching the body, or the sight of leaves or branches moving in the wind. Concentrate on the concept as wind, wind, till you get the Ugaha Nimitta. You can discern the Nimitta of the wind by reestablishing the fourth jhana with, with another casino object, and using the light of concentration, see this movement externally. The Ugaha Nimitta looks like Steam coming off hot milk rice. Put the Pativanga nimit- but the Pativanga Nimitta is motionless. Develop the Nimitta in the usual way. How you develop the light casino. To develop the light casino, you should look at rays of light as they stream into a room through, for example, a crack in the wall and fall on the floor as they stream through the leaves of a tree, and fall on the ground. You can also look up through the branches of a tree at the light in the sky above. If unable to visualize it, you can put a candle or lamp inside an earthen pot and place the pot in such a way that the rays of light come out of the opening of the pot and fall upon the wall. Concentrate on the circle of light on the wall as a concept as light, light till you get the Ugaha Nimitta and then develop it in the usual way. How you develop space casino. To develop space casino, you should look at the space in a doorway, window, or keyhole. If unable to visualize it, you can make a circular hole in a, p- in a piece of a board about eight inches to one foot across. Hold the board up so you can see only the sky through the hole. No trees or other objects. Concentrate on the space within that circle as a concept, as space, space, and develop the nimitta in the usual way. The Four Immaterial Jhanas Once you have attained the four jhanas with each of the ten casinas, you can proceed to develop the four immaterial jhanas, a a rupa jhana also called the four immaterial states. They are, one, the base of boundless space. 
Number two, the base of boundless consciousness. Number three, the base of nothingness. And number four, the base of neither perception nor non-perception. You can develop them with all the casinas except the space casino. How you develop the base of boundless space. To develop the four immaterial jhanas, you should first reflect upon the disadvantages of materiality. The human body produced by the sperm and egg of your parents is called the produced body. Since you have a produced body, you are open to assault with weapons such as knives, spears, and bullets, and to being hit, beaten, and tortured. The produced body is also subject to many diseases of, for example, the eyes, ears, and heart. So you should consider with wisdom that because you have a produced body made of materiality, you're subject to various kinds of suffering. And that if you can be free of that materiality, you can also be free of the suffering. Even though a fourth fine material jhana su surpasses gross physical materiality, it is still based on it. Thus, you need to surmount the casino materiality. Having considered this, and with no desire now for the casino materiality, you should reestablish the fourth jhana with one of the nine casinas, such as the earth casino, emerge from it, and reflect on its disadvantages. It is based on materiality, which you no longer desire. It has joy of the third jhana as its near enemy, and it is grosser than the four immaterial jhanas. But you do not need to reflect on the disadvantages of the mental formations, the two jhana factors in the fourth jhana, because they are the same as in the material, immaterial jhana. With no desire now for the fourth fine, fine material jhana, you should also reflect on the more peaceful nature of the immaterial jhanas. Then, Expand your nimitta, say, of the earth casino, so that it is boundless, or as much as you wish, and replace the casino materiality with the space it occupies. By concentrating on the space as space, space, or boundless space, boundless space. What remains is the boundless space formerly occupied by the casino. If unable to do so, you should discern and concentrate on the space of one place in the earth casino nimitta and then expand that up to, inf to the infinite universe. As a result, the entire earth casino nimitta is replaced by boundless space. Continue to concentrate on the boundless space nimitta until you reach jhana and then develop the five masteries. This is the first immaterial jhana, also called the base of boundless space. How you develop the base of boundless consciousness. The second immaterial jhana, also called the base of boundless consciousness, has as its object the base of boundless space consciousness, which has boundless space as its object. To develop the base of boundless consciousness, you should reflect on the disadvantages of the base of boundless space. It has the fourth fine material jhana as its near enemy and is not as peaceful as the base of boundless consciousness. With no desire now for the base of boundless space, you should also reflect on the more peaceful nature of the base of boundless consciousness. Then concentrate again and again on the consciousness that has boundless space as its object and note it as boundless consciousness. Boundless consciousness or just consciousness, consciousness. Continue to concentrate on the boundless consciousness nimitta until you reach jhana and then develop the five masteries. This is then the second immaterial jhana also called the base of boundless consciousness. How you develop the base of nothingness. The third immaterial jhana, also called the base of nothingness, has as its object the absence of the consciousness that had boundless space as its object, and which was itself the object of the base of boundless consciousness. To develop the base of nothingness, you should reflect on the disadvantages of the base of boundless consciousness. It has the base of boundless space as its near enemy and is not as peaceful as the base of nothingness.
With no desire now for the base of boundless consciousness, you should also reflect on the more peaceful nature of the base of nothingness. Then concentrate on the absence of the consciousness that has boundless space as its object. There were two jhana consciousnesses. First, the consciousness of the base of boundless space, and then that of the base of boundless consciousness. Two consciousnesses cannot arise in one conscious moment. When the consciousness of the base of boundless space was present, the other consciousness could not be present too, and vice versa. So, you take the absence of the consciousness of the base of boundless space as object and note it as nothingness, nothingness, or absence, absence. Continue to concentrate on that nimitta until you reach jhana and develop the five masteries. This is then the third immaterial jhana, also called the base of nothingness. How you develop the base of neither perception nor non-perception. The fourth immaterial jhana is called the base of neither perception nor non-perception. That is because the perception in this jhana is extremely subtle. In fact, all the mental formations in this jhana are extremely subtle. There is also neither feeling nor non-feeling, neither consciousness nor non-consciousness, neither contact nor non-contact, etc. But the jhana is explained in terms of perception, and it has as object the consciousness of the base of nothingness. To develop the base of neither perception nor non-perception, you should reflect on the disadvantages of the base of nothingness. It has the base of boundless consciousness as its near enemy and is not as peaceful as the base of neither perception nor non-perception. Furthermore, perception is a disease, a boil and a dart. With no desire now for the base of nothingness, you should also reflect on the more peaceful nature of the base of neither perception nor non-perception. Then concentrate again and again on the consciousness of the base of nothingness as peaceful, peaceful. Continue to concentrate on the peaceful, peaceful nimitta until you reach jhana and develop the five masteries. This is then the fourth immaterial jhana, also called the base of neither perception nor non-perception. Today we discussed how to develop the ten casinas and the eight attainments, the four fine material jhanas and the four immaterial jhanas. In the next talk we shall discuss how to develop the four sublime abidings, Brahma Viharas of loving kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and equanimity, and the four protective meditations of loving kindness, Buddha recollection, foulness meditation, and death recollection. Questions and answers to question 2.1. How should beginners balance the faculties, indriya, of concentration and wisdom? How should they practice wisdom in Anapanasati, mindfulness of breathing? Answer 2.1. We already talked about balancing the five controlling faculties in the very first talk, but we can summarize what was said. It is not so important for beginners to balance concentration and wisdom. This is because they are only beginners and their five controlling faculties are not yet developed. In the beginning of meditation, there is usually much restlessness of the mind, so the faculties are not yet strong and powerful. Only when they are strong and powerful is it necessary to balance them. But if beginners are able to balance the faculties already at the beginning stage, that is, of course, also good. For example, you are now practicing Anapanasati. Anapanasati is mindfulness of breathing. Knowing the breath is wisdom, panya. Being mindful of the breath is mindfulness, sati. One pointedness of mind on the breath is concentration. An effort to know the breath clearly is effort, virya. Having faith that Anapanasati can lead to jhana is faith, sadha. Beginners must try to develop strong and powerful controlling faculties. Their faith in Anapanasati must be strong enough. 
their effort to know the breath clearly must be strong enough. Their mindfulness of the breath must be strong enough. Their concentration on the breath must be strong enough. They must see the breath clearly. They must try to make their five controlling faculties strong and powerful, as well as try to balance them. If one is excessive, the others cannot function properly. For example, if faith is too strong and powerful, it produces emotion. This means that the effort faculty cannot maintain associated mental formations on the breath. Mindfulness cannot become established on the breath. The concentration faculty, too, cannot concentrate deeply on the breath, and wisdom cannot know the breath clearly. When, for example, effort is excessive, it makes the mind restless. So the other controlling faculties become weak, again weak, and cannot function properly. When mindfulness is weak, you cannot do anything because you cannot concentrate on the breath. Um, You will make little or no effort to discern the breath and may have no faith. You are now practicing samatha and samatha meditation. Strong and powerful concentration is good. But excessive concentration produces laziness. With laziness, the other faculties uh, again become again very weak and cannot function properly. At this stage, wisdom is very dull or inferior. It knows only the natural breath. So for the beginner who is practicing samatha meditation, it is enough just to know the breath clearly. When the Ugaha or Padivanga Nimitta appears, wisdom knows the Ugaha or Padivanga Nimitta. Too much general knowledge apart from this is not good, as you may always be discussing and criticizing. If a yogi discusses and criticizes Anapanasati too much, we can say his wisdom is excessive, which also makes the other controlling faculties weak and un- unable to function properly. So even though it is not yet very important, it is still good for a beginner to balance his five controlling faculties. How to balance them? We must practice with strong and powerful mindfulness, an effort to know the breath clearly, and concentrate on the breath with faith. Question 2.2. Why don't we, after attaining the fourth jhana, go straight to discern Go straight to discern the five aggregates, their nature of impermanence, impermanence, suffering, and non-self, and attain Nibbana. Why do we, before attaining Nibbana, need to practice meditation on the 32 parts of the body, skeleton, white casino, four elements, materiality, mentality, dependent origination, and vipassana? Answer 2.2. The Buddha taught the five aggregates method of practicing vipassana to three types of person. Those who have sharp wisdom, those whose vipassana knowledge of mentality is not clear, and those who prefer to practice vipassana in the brief way. What are the five aggregates? What is the difference between the five aggregates in mentality materiality? Do you know the answer? Before answering your second question, let us discuss mentality materiality and the five aggregates. There are four ultimate realities. Consciousness, associated mental factors, materiality, and nibbana. To attain nibbana, the fourth ultimate reality, we must see the impermanent suffering and non-self nature of the other three. That is, we must see, number one, 89 types of consciousness, vijnana. Number two, 52 types of associated mental factors, chitasaka. And three, 28 types of materiality, rupa. The 89 types of consciousness are called the consciousness aggregate. Of the 52 associated mental factors, feeling is the feeling aggregate, perception is the perception aggregate, and the remaining 50 associated mental factors are the formations aggregate. Sometimes the consciousnesses and associated mental factors together are called mentality Sometimes they are seen as four aggregates, the feeling aggregate, the perception aggregate, the formations aggregate, and the consciousness aggregate, which together are the mentality aggregate. The materiality aggregate is the 28 types of materiality. The consciousnesses associated mental factors and the materiality together are called mentality, materiality, or nama rupa. They are sometimes also called the five aggregates, materiality, feeling, perception, formations, and consciousness. Their causes are also only materiality mentality. These five clinging aggregates are dukkha, sacha, dhamma. 
dhammas of the noble truth of suffering. They need to be understood as such. In the Maha Nidana Sutta of the Digha Nikaya, the Buddha explains, quote, This dependent origination is profound, Ananda, and profound it appears. And Ananda, it is through not knowing, through not penetrating this Dhamma, that this generation has become a tangled skein, a knotted ball of thread, matted as the roots in a bed of reeds and finds no way out of the rounds of rebirth with its state of loss, unhappiness, unhappy destinations, perdition. With regards to the statement, the commentaries explain, quote, There is no one, even in a dream, who has got out of the fearful rounds of rebirth, which is ever destroying beings like a thunderbolt, unless he has severed with the knife of knowledge, well wedded on the stone of sublime concentration, this, this, wheel, this wheel of existence, dependent origination, which offers no footing owing to its great profundity and is hard to get by owning, owing to the maze of many methods. This means that the yogi who does not know and has not penetrated dependent origination by the different stages of Vipassana knowledge cannot escape from the rounds of rebirth. And in the Tana Sutta of the Nguttara Nikaya, this was said by the Buddha. And what bhikkhus is the noble truth of the origin of suffering? Uh, number one, because of I ignorance, avijja, formations arise, sankara. Because of formations, consciousness, or vijnana, um, because of consciousness, materiality, mentality, um, rupa, nama rupa, because of material materiality, the six bases, salayatna, because of the six sense bases, contact, vasa, because of contact, feeling, vedana, because of feeling, craving, tanha, because of craving, clinging, upadana, because of clinging, existence, because of existence, birth, jati, because of birth, aging and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief and despair arise. Such is the origin of this whole mass of suffering. This is called because the noble truth of the origin of suffering. This is also called dependent origination. And the Buddha says dependent origination is the noble truth of the origin of suffering. The noble truth of suffering, which is the five clinging aggregates, and the noble truth of the origin of suffering, which is dependent origination, are called formations, sankara. They are the object of vipassana, vipassana knowledge. At the different stages of vipassana knowledge, you comprehend these formations as impermanence, anicca, and suffering, dukkha, and not self, anatta. Without knowing and penetrating them, how can you comprehend them that they are impermanent, etc.? That is why we teach vipassana systematically. To know ultimate materiality, the materiality clinging aggregate, you must practice four elements meditation until you see that materiality consists of small particles that we call rupa kalapas. And you need to see the four elements in those small particles. And you need to discern both the base and its object together. Without discerning materiality in this way, you cannot discern mentality, the four mental clinging aggregates. That is why we teach Vipassana stage by stage. Now to your second question. According to the Theravada tradition, there are two types of meditation subjects, Pariharya, Kamathadana, and Sabhubhattaku, Kamathana. Um, the first one, Parihariyata Kamadhana, sorry about the pronunciation here, lack of pronunciation, is the meditation subject by which the individual yogi develops concentration to be used for vipassana. The yogi must always use that meditation subject as his foundation. Sabhathaka Kamuthatana, on the other hand, is the meditation subjects to be developed by all yogis alike. They are the four protective meditations, loving kindness, Buddha recollection, death recollection, foulness meditation. 
So although a yogi uses anapanasati, mindfulness of breathing, as his pariharayata kamavana, he must practice the four protective meditations before going on to vipassana. This is the orthodox procedure. To develop loving-kindness meditation up to jhana, it is better if the yogi has already developed the white gasina meditation up to the fourth jhana. An example of this is the 500 bhikkhus to whom the Buddha taught the Karanaya Metta Sutta. Those bhikkhus were expert in the 10 kasinas in eight attainments, Samapati. They had practiced Vipassana up to a rise in parish knowledge and had gone to the forest to meditate further. But they returned to the Buddha because the devas resident in that in the forest had become annoyed and had frightened the bhikkhus. The Buddha taught the bhikkhus the Karanaya Metta Sutta both as a meditation subject and as a protective chant, parita. As a meditation subject, it is for those who have already attained loving kindness jhana, metta jhana, and have broken down the barriers between the different types of person. The Karanaya Metta Sutta is a more specialized practice of loving kindness in which, in which one practices up to the third jhana by extending loving kindness to 11 categories of beings with the thought, may all beings be happy and secure, etc. The texts say the Buddha knew those 500 bhikkhus would very easily be able to do this because they were already expert in the 10 kasinas. And how is loving kindness jhana made easier? By kasina meditation? In the Nguttara Nikaya, the Buddha taught that the four color kasinas, the white of the four color kasinas, the white casina is best. The white casina makes the yogi's mind clear and bright. A clear and tranquil mind is superior and powerful. If a yogi practices loving kindness meditation with a clear mind, free from defilements, he usually attains loving kindness jhana within one sitting. So, if one enters the fourth white casina jhana and after emerging from it practices loving kindness jhana, it is very easy to succeed. In order to attain the fourth white casina jhana, a yogi should first practice skeleton meditation internally and externally because this makes the white casina meditation very easy. Therefore, after the fourth anapana, Jhana, we usually teach yogis to do the 32 parts of the body, skeleton meditation and white casina meditation. In our experience, most yogis say that the fourth white casina jhana is better than the fourth anapana jhana because it produces a clearer, brighter, and more tranquil mind, which is also very helpful for practicing other meditation subjects. So we usually teach white casina meditation before loving kindness meditation. There is also a problem common to beginners. You may have practiced loving-kindness meditation. Did you attain jhana? In practice, if a yogi wants to extend loving-kindness to someone of the same sex, he should first take the smiling face of that person as object and then develop loving-kindness meditation towards him with, may this good person be free from mental suffering, etc. With a beginner that smiling face very soon disappears. He cannot continue his loving-kindness meditation because there is no object, so he cannot attain loving-kindness jhana or anything. If he uses the fourth white casino jhana, it's different. He emerges from the jhana, and when he develops loving-kindness, then, because of the preceding concentration, the smiling face will not fade away. He is able to concentrate deeply on that image and able to attain up to the third loving-kindness jhana within one sitting. If he practices systematically up to the breaking down of barriers between the different types of person, he can even practice the 11 ways of the Karanaya Metta Sutta and 528 ways mentioned in the Pati Sam. Hida Maga Pali text. For this reason too, we usually teach the white casino meditation before loving kindness meditation. You may also have practiced Buddha recollection. 
Did you attain access concentration? When those who have succeeded in loving kindness jhana practice the uh, Buddha recollection, they are able to reach access concentration within one sitting, again because of the preceding concentration. Foulness meditation, too, becomes easy. If a yogi practices foulness meditation up to the first jhana and then death recollection, he is able to succeed in one sitting. That is why we teach the white casino meditation before the four protective meditations. If, however, a yogi wants to go straight to vipassana without practicing the four protective meditations, he can do so no problem. Question 2.3. Why, after having discerned materiality and mentality, must one practice the first and fifth methods of dependent origination? What are the first and fifth methods? Answer 2.3. There are, according to the Theravada tradition, seven stages of purification. The first five are, number one, morality purification, that is, morality sila of four types, the Padimokha restraint morality, the sense restraint morality, livelihood purification morality, and requisite related morality. Number two, consciousness purification, that is, access concentration and the eight attainments, samapati, absorption concentration. Number three, view, purif- view purification, that is, mentality, mat- materiality, definition knowledge. Number four, Doubt overcoming purification, that is, cause apprehending knowledge, in other words, seeing dependent origination. And five, path and non-path knowledge and vision purification, that is, comprehension knowledge and arise and perish knowledge, which is the beginning of Vipassana. So before Vipassana, Vipassana, there are four purifications. Why? Vipassana is to comprehend the impermanence, suffering, and non-self nature of materiality, mentality, and their causes. Without knowing mentality, materiality, and their causes, how can we comprehend that they are impermanent, suffering, and not self? How can we practice Vipassana? It is only after we have thoroughly discerned mentality, materiality, and their causes that we can practice Vipassana meditation. Mentality, materiality, and their causes are called formations. They perish as soon as they arise, which is why they are impermanent. They are subject to constant arising and perishing, which is why they are suffering. They have no self or or stable and indestructive essence, which is why they are non-self. Comprehending impermanent suffering and non-self in this way is real Vipassana. So before Vipassana, we teach yogis to discern mentality, materiality, and dependent origination. The commentaries explain it as uh, anicchati pancha khanda and uh, anicchati khanda panchakam. That means impermanence is the five aggregates. The five aggregates are, in other words, mentality, materiality, and their causes. So real Vipassana requires that you know the five aggregates and their causes and effects. The Buddha taught according to the character of his listeners and taught four methods for discerning dependent origination. In the Pati Samhita Maga, there is yet another method. Altogether, there are five methods. The The first of the methods taught by the Buddha is to discern dependent origination in forward order because of ignorance, formations, because of formations, consciousness, because of consciousness, materiality, mentality, etc. The first first method is popular in Theravada Buddhism, but may be very difficult for those who have no Abhidhamma knowledge. Even yogis with good Abhidhamma knowledge may have many difficulties. The fifth method taught by the Venerable Sariputta and recorded in the Pati Samhita Maka Pali text is easy for beginners. It is to discern that five past causes have produced five present effects and that five present effects I'm sorry, in that five present causes will produce five future effects. This is the main principle in the fifth method. If you want to know it with direct experience, you should practice up to this stage. After practicing the fifth method systematically, you will not have much difficulty in practicing the first method. 
For this reason, we teach the fifth method before the first method. We teach you all five methods to those who have time and want to practice further. But although the Buddha taught dependent origination according to the character of his listeners, one method is enough to attain Nibbana. Even so, because the first first method is popular in Theravada Buddhism, we teach both the fifth and first method first methods. One day, the venerable Ananda practiced dependent origination in all four ways. In the evening, he went to the Buddha and said, it is wonderful, venerable sir. It is marvelous how profound this dependent origination is and how profound it appears. And yet it appears to me as clear as clear. The Buddha replied, do not say so, Ananda. Do not say so, Ananda. This dependent origination is profound and appears profound. It is through not understanding, not penetrating this truth that the world has become like a a tangled skein, matted like a bird's uh, nest, tangled like reeds, unable to pass beyond the states of woe, the woeful destinations, ruin, and the rounds of rebirth. This means that without knowing dependent origination, with um, Anubodha Nana and the Pati Vedna Nana, Nana, one cannot escape the rounds of rebirth, samsara, and the four wo- woeful realms of paya. The anubodhanyana is the mentor- mentality, materiality, definition knowledge, and cause apprehending knowledge. The pati vedhanyana is all the vipassana knowledges, vipassana jnana. So without knowing dependent origination with the Anubodhna jnana and Pativeda jnana, one cannot attain Nibbana. With this quotation, the commentary says that without knowing dependent origination, no one can escape from the rounds of rebirth, even in a dream. This concludes talk two from Knowing and Seeing by the Venerable Pa'ak Sayadaw.